Just a quick question. So since you don't believe that the Septuagint is inspired, how do you reconcile when Jesus quotes it in Mark 7, 6 through 7? And he refer- he puts in Isaiah 29, 13. Oh, first of all, let's stop right there. The Apostolic Scriptures of the New, New Testament quotes from the Septuagint, I believe it is 58% of the time that it quotes the Scriptures. So it's not just when Yeshua quotes in Mark 7, 6 through 7. Just throwing that out there. Would you affirm that at least this particular verse is inspired since Jesus is quoting it? Of course, I would uh, say that the verse itself, uh, Isaiah 29, 13, is inspired. I think that the, this shows that people have missed, missed, the, uh, missed what we have said. Anyway, uh, I have heard arguments for the Luke 4 passage simply being that Jesus was handed the Greek scroll, but how do you reconcile when Jesus quotes it from memory in the version available in the Septuagint? Yeah, I think that the uh, the disciples in Yeshua quote from the Septuagint often. Um, so I, I don't think people have quite understood. Clearly, the Orthodox tradition, so I take the Orthodox position on the inspired text of Scripture. And the, the Orthodox, the Christian Orthodox belief of inspired text. Now, this, I'm not making this up. This is, this is what Orthodoxy has said for quite some time. Basically, the original autographs of the authors are inspired. That means that the Lord, the Holy Spirit, uh, pushed those people and inspired those people to sit down and write out the, the text. It is that text, which we no longer have, that is inspired. Any copy is not inspired. Does it contain inspired text? The answer is yes. It contains inspired text. But is the copy itself inspired? And the answer is no. Why? Well, this is a very important, a very important thing to understand within uh, textual criticism. Because if it's inspired, then there can be no mistakes. If every copy is inspired from the Holy Spirit, then there should be no variance whatsoever because the Holy Spirit is the one who's inspiring it. However, that's not the case. We have thousands of variants, which means that human authors, human people have accidentally done something. That's not inspired. That's a mistake. The Holy Spirit does not make mistakes. Okay. So then now let's go to translations. The best way to, to uh, show this would be, is the King James Version inspired? Do we believe that the King James Version is an inspired text? And except for KJV onlyists, we're going to say, no, of course it's not an inspired text. There was all sorts of problems with the KJV. It's not an inspired text. Well, then is any translation in, inspired text? The answer is, once again, no, it is not an inspired text. It contains inspired scripture but it is not in the inspired text. The you know, inspired I have to, te- I, I'm sorry. I have to ask a footnote question. Sure. Because I think you've been maybe in the history of more, interacted more with KJV inspir- inspired uh, people. Um, what, what do they say about the Apocrypha? Because there's a, the King James version has the Apocryphal as well. Do they maintain that that too is inspired or do they say no, we have to subtract the Catholic uh, Apocrypha and then that the remainder King James is inspired. Sorry to, I don't mean to derail. No, no, I, no, I, I, it, I, I think that, I think that people go both, both ways, but I think that most KJV only is say, no, it's not part of the inspired text. Okay. So, so the Holy spirit stopped working through those men just during the time they were working on the Apocrypha, but then, re-engaged with them when they were back on. Okay. Okay. I mean, I guess that's that, oh, there's, that logic that logically fits that view. Uh, here, the, here's the other problem is that there are multiple mistakes in the original K- KJV printing. So which one? Well, is, I know, in, I know, other, other than the adultery Bible, right? The other than that, that. wasn't, that wasn't a first printing. So the oh, question, I mean, when you get into KJV only, then you have to ask, well, which printing was inspired? Was the very first printing inspired? Was it what has become gotcha. to be, was it? Well, you, it's what, similar to the Book of Mormon, right? In a way of like, you take a printing, a printed product, and then they're like, well, we're going to update it. Well, wait a minute, you know, 
you know, you know, well, we're going to update, you know, all these changes that we know were made in the Book of Mormon. Okay. That now, okay. So thank you for indulging me on that. That that's well, a, that's a, what what we have is the standard KJV is not what was originally uh, printed, right? Printed, it's adjusted. Yeah, yeah. They adjusted it at what twenty years later or something like that. So I mean, then the question becomes which one is inspired or not. So all of this is actually then the, uh, another question that could come from this is now let's take it out of, out of English. Is the standard Mandarin Chinese Bible also inspired? Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us your thoughts on this subject by leaving a comment in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and enable those notifications. And we'll see you in the next video.